I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can clean up scanned line art in Photoshop. In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how you can clean up line art images in Photoshop. This is a scanned image that I have inside Photoshop. It's just come straight out of the scanner and I want to get this ready so that it can go on my website. I sell these images but the same process is going to be appropriate for anyone who wants to clean up scanned line art. The first thing I'm going to do is convert this into an RGB image because it's come in as a grayscale from the scanner. I'll choose image and then mode and then RGB. I'll do this for a couple of reasons. Firstly because I want to give this away as an RGB image so somebody can use the frame to actually frame a photo because they're going to put their photo in the middle here. But also because I need to be able to use some colour in a minute to help clean this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is to try and get rid of the white around the edge here. Just want to make sure that it is clean white so I'm going to add it back in later on myself. So I'm going to target the magic wand tool and the magic wand tool has a tolerance associated with it and the higher the tolerance the more multicolored pixels this is going to pick up. So I'm thinking for this image probably around 20 pixels is a good value. So I'm just going to click here and see what happens. So I'm clicking and I'm going to select all the white in this image. In fact I'm selecting all the white in the middle as well as around the outside edge. I wanted to remove this from the image but to do so I'm going to have to turn the background layer into a regular layer. So I'm just going to double click on it and click OK and that makes it a regular layer. So now I can delete and just see what I'm left with. By pressing delete I'm removing all the white from the image and just leaving the black pixels. I'm going to deselect my selection by clicking select deselect. Now if this wasn't a really good result, if it was too much or too little, I could go back and just change my tolerance, press the undo key a few times and start over again. But I'm thinking I've got a reasonably good selection here. But let's go and see just how good it is. With this layer selected I'm going to click on this add layer style icon and I'm going to click on stroke. I want to add a stroke to this image and I want it to be red and that's partly why I went to get an RGB image because giving this a red stroke is going to help me identify where the problems are in my image. I'm just going to increase the stroke size a little bit. And these are all the speckled colour pixels in my image. Now if I had an absolute heap of them I would go back in with the magic wand tool and start selecting them. But right now I'm thinking I've got a pretty good result. Now all these red pixels are pixels I want to take out of the image. So I'm going to click here on the eraser tool and I'm going to go and set up my eraser because my eraser is just a brush like everything else. Size I can manage myself from the keyboard but I do want to make sure that its hardness value is 100% here. We need to have a really hard brush because that will show us that this brush indicator that I'm seeing in the middle of the screen is the exact size of the brush. Now I'm using the square bracket keys on the computer keyboard to change the size of this brush. The open square bracket makes it smaller and the close square bracket makes it bigger and I'm just going to click here to remove these pixels and because I'm using a hard edge brush I'm not going to select anything that is outside the edge of this brush. If we were choosing and using a soft edge brush then this wouldn't be nearly as accurate as it is. So I'm just going to clean up the worst of these pixels that I can see here and get rid of very easily. And I'm going to do that around the edge here too. And I want to be really, really careful that I don't go over any of the black area of my image because otherwise I'm going to wipe out those pixels and I certainly don't want to do that. Now to get this strip of pixels here I'm going to make my brush size quite small and I'm going to click just above the area I want to get rid of and I'm going to shift click here and that just runs a brush line down there to get rid of all of those. And I think I've got a similar problem here. Click shift click to get rid of them. 
And to finish off with this, I'm going to choose the zoom key and I'm going to zoom in here so I can see things really clearly. Go back to my eraser tool and then just erase over these problem areas to clean up the image and to move to another area, I'm just going to hold this space bar as I drag. And because I'm using this really hard edge brush, I'm able to get everything really, really accurately. And I just want to be really, really careful that I don't get the black edges that I don't want to remove, but I get these loose pixels around the edge. So this helps me clean up my line art so that when somebody creates a object or a photo that's framed by this frame that they're going to be happy with the effect and they're not going to get stray black pixels for example when they go to print it. So I'll make sure that for these frames that I create that the outside edge is really clean and neat and then later on I'm going to come back in and put a pure white in there so I know that it's exactly white. It's the pure white colour and it's not leftover shades of very pale grey, for example, from the scanning process. Now I go all the way around the outside edge of these. I'm going to just leave that for now because I don't need to do that with you. But in the inside areas too, I'm going to come down and make sure that my brush size is a bit smaller and just knock out anything that is a problem in these areas too. This is a way of cleaning up my line art. Now also in the middle here, this is going to be empty later on. I'm not going to have anything in here at all, but I'm going to want to make sure that there are no stray pixels again here. Now when I was selecting the white areas with the magic wand tool, I had a particular setting in place and I'm just going to show you what it was. I'm going to show you why I'm not going to use it in future. So let's just zoom back out of here for a minute because I'm going to assume that I've cleaned up all this area. So let's just say that this is all nicely cleaned up now and we're ready to proceed. So with this image, I'm going to just drag and drop this stroke, this red stroke color into the trash can because I don't need it anymore. It was only there to help me identify the spots in the image. And now I'm going back with the magic wand tool and I'm going to select this time. I'm just going to deselect everything because it looks like I've selected things. I'm going to select just this inside area. Now to select this inside area, I'm going to need to change my settings from last time because last time I didn't have contiguous selected. And so when I click without contiguous selected, it selects all the matching colors in the image wherever they happen to be. And so that's why we got the insides and the outsides. But now I'm going to deselect the selection. This time I want contiguous because when I click in here, I only want to get the inside pixels here. So I want to select this area in here because this is the area that ultimately is going to be hollow in my image. I don't want it to be filled with pixels, but I do want this outside edge to have a white border underneath it. So let's go and add a new layer to this image and let's pull this layer below the layer that has the frame on it. Now in here, I want to fill this with white, but I want to fill it in white everywhere that I don't have selected right now. Well, the way I do that is to invert this selection. So I'm going to go select inverse and now I have selected everything that is not this central piece and I'm going to fill it with white. So I'm going to make white my foreground color. Click here on this layer and press Alt backspace Option Delete on the Mac and that just fills that layer with white. I used that inverse selection process because it was actually easier for me to select this area, the area I didn't want white in, than it would have been to try and select the area that I did want white. So I select the area I don't want and simply invert the selection to get what I do. And now let's have a look and see what this is going to do. So I'm just going to choose select, deselect because I'm now finished with that selection. I would go ahead and save this frame now and it would be ready to be distributed. If I wanted to save it as something other than a PSD file and didn't want to save it as layers, I would save it as a PNG file because PNG retains transparency. 
but let's go and pick up an image that we can place in here and just see how these frames work. Now I've gone ahead and opened an image. Let's go to Window. I'm just going to pick up the image that I opened and I'm going to add this image to this frame. So I'm going to select the image by clicking Select All and then Edit Copy. And I'm going to click on the target image and I'm going to choose Edit Paste. Now the image comes in in the middle, which is not where it's supposed to be, but it's very easy for me to just drag it to the layer below. And you can see that my image underneath is a little bit smaller than this frame. I designed my frame so that they're nice and big. So I'm just going to grab its bottom right handle here and hold the Shift key as I size the image to a nice size and I'm going to adjust its placement inside this frame. So you can see here now that we've got a really clean frame that we've created. We've been able to create the hollow part of it and the outside border is a solid white. And we've learned along the way how to clean up line art so that we would know that there are no stray specks of black inside this image here or dark grey and there are no nasty specks here so that if somebody were to print this, this area is going to print perfectly white and not splotchy. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.